Okay, thank you for enabling the recording. So, uh, this is um, a uh, webinar on how to overcome research concerns. Uh, and again, that's um, through the uh, science and education team at the GLOBE program. Uh, Scientist Skill Webinar Series. So this is the second in a three-part series of webinars on building scientist skills, uh, part of phase two of the Student Climate Research Campaign. So just a brief outline of uh, what we are going to be doing. An overview of this webinar uh, and the Globe Inquiry Model. Common problems, which include finding and using data, uh, multiple sources and, or types of data, uh, what to do with unexpected results, uh, inconclusive data, project fatigue, and then also uh, making sure that you're meeting deadlines. And finally, we'll wrap up with important upcoming dates for the SCRC. So beginning with the Globe Inquiry Model. Um, so before I go any further, I'll uh, uh, let Travis Anderson uh, take the helm. Hello. Are you, you can hear me now then, I take it? All right, thanks. Well, sorry for all these delays. Uh, Thank you, Gary, for stepping in. I'll try to get difficulties worked out. And let's see. So the first thing we were going through is the Globe Inquiry model. And this is available through the student zone. You'll be able to Notice is you get to the student zone. I'm sorry, you get to the student zone by clicking on Explore Science and then down to Student Zone. We'll then click on Be a Scientist. From there, you click on the link Steps in the Scientific Process and then you come across the Scientific Process Research Process. Unfortunately, the scientific research process is not always linear, and so uh, it's up as high as it will go. Is that better? All right, thank you. Uh, let's see. Go back. Uh, the scientific process is not always linear, and uh, let's see. I'm noticing my PowerPoint presentation is not working correctly uh, because it's going to the next slides. So uh, what I was basically was going to be showing you is that uh, you could be observing stuff in nature, but then uh, you might uh, develop a hypothesis and then also uh, go to plan an investigation to analyze data. Uh, but uh, things sometimes will go backwards. Uh, you might analyze data and then realize it's not quite right, so you need to go back and plan your investigation uh, or redevelop your hypothesis. Uh, so what do you do when you have a problem in regards to researching your data? Uh, depending on the problem, uh, you can ask a scientist to help mentor your project. Uh, you can take a new look at the problem, you know, step back, 
gather your thoughts and see if um, that might help you lead in a new direction. And you can also contact the science and education team at globe.gov and we would be happy to help you. Other things you might uh, have issues with is finding your data or finding data to use. Uh, we have addressed this situation in a few other webinars recently. Most recent ones were on December 4th and October 23rd uh, in regards to visualizing your data and um, using long-term data. Where you can find those archives on those past webinars is you would uh, click on uh, professional development resources and sorry teacher learning and then go to professional development resources and then click on webinars and you'll see uh, a list of our most past uh, webinars. Also, depending on the type of data you need, uh, you can contact your local weather service office uh, or your cooperative extension office at the university science departments. It can also help you on where to go look for some data resources. Web search engines are a good source. Uh, just type in some keywords. For example, if you just wanted you know, temperature data for uh, particular countries in Europe, at a particular time field. You can also collect your own set of measurements. And you know, especially if you've been uh, doing uh, collecting measurements for a period of time, you can then access through the GLOBE website in the visualization section. And when you're going to be using this data, uh, some of the data can be manipulated and graphed into uh, spreadsheet programs. So you want to uh, make sure you have the data that can, uh, you know, it's in that type of format, usually a textual format, a common delivered format. Also, you want to make sure your data has uh, good quality control and the storage measures taken. So what happens when you uh, have all your data, you're looking at it, you'll know some outliers and it is fine to omit those outliers. If you want, just make a note of it during your research report. Also, some of the data may not be high enough quality for your research needs. Uh, for example, if you were uh, needing data that's uh, on a time scale of every day, yet the data uh, set that you have is only for once a month, you may not really be able to use that data. And then using multiple sources and types of data, uh, so you have your own, say, data set from uh, GLOBE that you've collected, and then you've also brought in data from another source. So what you want to do is make sure the dates and times uh, line up. Uh, you want to consider all the different caveats. Uh, does the phenomenon you're going to be studying, does it vary in time or does it vary in space? And so you want to make sure you can adjust for it. The, you know, in regards to time, uh, since we use in GLOBE, we usually collect measurements at UTC and, or around local solar noon. You also want to make sure the data set you've collected, their times uh, are in UTC. If not, you can convert it. Or if the data set that you have uh, doesn't take the measurements around local solar noon and yours are, can you count for that in your research? Also, you want to make sure your units are in agreement. Uh, for example, there's uh, some countries still take measurements in English units, like in Fahrenheit, inches, ounces. You want to convert those to metric units. And then during your process of converting to metric units, uh, 
are your measurements in millimeters and someone else's is in meters if it's in a, a length scale you want to make sure that everyone is doing the same uh, set of measurements at the same time scale some other common problems that you might encounter are some unexpected results So it's okay if your uh, hypothesis is not correct or unexpected. You, know, you were hoping for one outcome and you actually got a different. Uh, that's no problem because that can lead into uh, some un, uh, unanticipated outcomes and they're a great discovery. For example, uh, scientists were studying some uh, seawall uh, impacts on the ecology of beaches in Chile and California. And while they were doing this, a earthquake had hit. And so what they did is they took that as an, uh, an advantage uh, to study the impacts of an earthquake instead of just the seawall itself. So they had measurements uh, prior to be looking at. Then after the earthquake, uh, they then now had measurements to be able to collect and note the impacts. You can read about that story and our uh, blog, little blog.globe.gov. Sometimes you'll have inconclusive results. Uh, what we mean is it doesn't really tell you one way or the other if your hypothesis is correct or not. Uh, there's a number of reasons why this can happen. Uh, your research question uh, may have not been it may have been too complex for the data set that you had available. Uh, time constraints um, in regards to, oh, like I said, with the uh, the resolution of the time where you needed something in a time scale of every day, but your measurements data set only provided to you in weekly or monthly measurements. Uh, that may not be able to give you a actually real conclusive note answers. Also, uh, another research problem might have been revealed during the project uh, that allowed that had focused your attention on. And so you by the time uh, your project was due, uh, you just couldn't give the results for that uh, for what you initially anticipated for. Also, uh, incomplete or inadequate data sets. Uh, one example you know, where we had uh, an incomplete or inadequate data set is students wanted to do a comparison of uh, how climate or actually temperatures affect the bass population in the lake. And while they were doing their data collection, they realized that the temperatures were averaged and where they needed more of the extreme values and so they were not able to give a conclusive answer on how the temperatures affected it. So they were either going to collect uh, more measurements on their own and be able to make sure they have a data set that allows for what they want to research. Uh, let's see. Uh, most studies uh, mention future work, uh, and uh, there's no problem on why they have inclusive results. So, uh, what we can do is uh, more data should be collected, and we will collect more data. Uh, and you just go from there. Let's see. Uh, project fatigue can cause problems. And what we mean by that is uh, you might have been uh, working on this project for a while. Uh, it's no problem. It happens to uh, the best of us. Good research questions can take longer to analyze than originally expected. And so if you have a clear 
compelling motivation for your answering your research question that will allow you to keep motivated. You can also take smaller steps in your research project and where you would answer your uh, find, break it up into several parts to different questions where you would want to you know, simplify you know, your overall question into smaller steps. Uh, also take a short break. And revisit the project again uh, with a you know, fresh mind. You know, put it off for a weekend or so and then come back to it. And then deadlines. Uh, we all have deadlines uh, that come up. Uh, they're not always deadlines based off on the teacher. Uh, and there's real world science problems uh, that don't always abide by them. So when you start your project, you know, try to be aware of a deadline you may have, but it's not always possible to know what it is. For example, if you, know, you were trying to do a seasonal project, you'll know that you only have a few months to do your analysis or, and gather your data and then draw up the conclusions. So to summarize, it is uh, normal for scientists to encounter a variety of problems in doing research. Please you know, let's seek advice, uh, especially you know, from a science mentor. You know, they're very helpful. Take you know, fresh eyes on the problem. Take a look at it. You know, determine if it's really what is a problem or you know, if uh, what you thought was a problem that arose was actually a thing you could use for a different type of study. And also at the Globe Program Office, we can help you uh, with your research problems and we'd be happy to uh, give you our advice. And just contact us at you know, science at globe.gov. Some upcoming dates for the SDRC Phase 2 is uh, we have the Climate and Land Cover Project IOPs continuing through January. And January 29th uh, is our next uh, SCRC webinar uh, where we have uh, some examples from Africa showing globe data in action. We also have our second annual Earth Day video competition. Uh, the videos will be due on March 8th and so start preparing for that. And then we can also have, sorry, we also have our art competition calendars available. Don't forget to purchase them. I would appreciate your time in attending this webinar. I apologize for the technical difficulties we're having, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess too. Thank you. Well, thanks, Julia. Uh, glad you started becoming active uh, as a GLOBE member uh, just recently.
Does anyone have any questions they would like answered in regards to this latest webinar? Uh, 